One of my first memories is drawing, pretending I was drawing letters, language, and I would scribble, 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 and ask my mother if there was any letters in there that she could see. And she had a um, couple of art books, art history books, and I remember looking at them as a kid. I remember with my mother looking at these art books, she had like three or four of them, and I think they're mainly black and white. But, and then we would go through and look at them and look at these great masterpieces, and then we'd go into town and she would show me these tubes of paint at the Hallmark store, and I would open them up and smell them and grab the brush, and, and I just felt it was um, a form of alchemy. You know, it was like turning water into wine. And how did these people squeeze out these paint you know, with a brush and apply it in a certain way and just turn nothing into something? And and I thought it was it was magic. And they were magicians. And I I wanted to be a magician like that. I never saw a painting until I was ooh, 17, except for what I was making. And uh, I graduated high school. I grew up in this little farming town in San Joaquin Valley. And I'd saved my money up all through high school to, to get out of there. And I went to Europe for the summer. And I remember I walked into the um, London National Gallery and I checked my backpack and I was very, very excited. When I came walking up and here was this the second to last self-portrait of Rembrandt. And I stood in front of this thing and it was just like, the whole universe was just downloaded into my mind. And I looked at that painting and I, could, I knew exactly what colors he used. I knew how he applied the paint, everything. It all just went, hit me. And I felt like I was now part of the, the secret. And I remember also seeing the uh, drawing of Leonardo da Vinci in a very dimly lit room, and it was a, what they call a cartoon. And it was just otherworldly, and I thought, okay, this is who I am. This is what I want to do with my life. And it was just one of those deeply profound moments. And so I came back at the end of the summer. At one point, I ended up in Milan and standing in front of the Last Supper, and I spent half the day there, just walking back and forth and pretending I was Leonardo da Vinci and the painting wasn't finished yet. And, you know, I was 17 years old, and it had a, um, a profound impact on me. So for me, you know, painting, I started off as a figurative painter, as a realist, but then I, there was a mystery that I was always after, and I think Rembrandt's light and the idea of what the abstract expressions were about and, yeah, and spirituality and this unspoken language and how do you tap into that and all these things all started coalesce just becoming one idea with me. One thing that's that renaissance window because as a figurative painter I wanted to have space in my paintings so it was very important to me to create this sense of depth This is filmmaking. You know, it's the way we see, how we see movies. It's just, it's extraordinary. And some of his, I mean, look at that. God. The fleshiness of that and the strokes and they're so there. And then he would go back in with the, the uh, end of his brush and make those marks for the hair. And here he is, a young guy posing in front of the mirror, learning how to paint. Looks like he had bad teeth. And this is his mother. And look again, look how thick the paint was, and he carves back into it. But I just love the um, the way that you know she's 
pulling the sense of space that he creates. At one point when I was had, had these little odd jobs, um, or jobs, I got out of Cal Arts and, and uh, waited on tables for a while. And then I built movie sets for a while. And so I, I found that I would have little chunks of time to work and I could never finish a painting all at once. And so I started developing this technique of glazing and I started reading about the old masters and how they got this sense of depth and light. So I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And I felt that it was really, really worked for my, my work schedule. So I could work on two paintings in the morning and then go off to work. And then I come home at the end of the day and then work on them again because they'd be kind of dry enough to work on them. And, and it just developed into this whole language. What I find so fascinating though about Rembrandt also, besides the light and its ability to paint, like this painting here, it's Christ being lowered from the cross, but the person that's holding his limp arm is him. That's Rembrandt, self-portrait, and he's lowering down the dead body of Christ, and you know, Holland had won their independence from Spain, so the, uh, the Catholic idea of what art was supposed to be, you know, with the religious themes was pretty much taboo. And that's why all the portraits and the still lives and landscapes were so prominent. But he keeps doing these religious paintings. I just find it so fascinating. It's like, what is he saying? As he's lowering down the dead body of Christ, is he saying that this is the end of Christianity, it's over, it's dead, and I'm watching this thing from above? Um, is this about his own spirituality? living now, beginning of the 21st century, and with a computer age and information age, and when the um, internet first came about, I, I thought this is just a, it's a manifestation of the collective unconscious of humanity. This is it. It's like every thought that everybody's ever had is suddenly accessible through this little portal, and that portal is looking into a fourth dimension. And that fourth dimension is a conceptualized space. My paintings have a conceptualized space. And the mark making that I do is figurative in the sense that it's about my own physicality. So I'm still being a figurative painter, but the subconscious moment becomes a conscious act once it's already happened and I start going back into it again and developing it and forming it and placing it within a space and pulling it back out and having it as a reflection of light or it is life, it's light itself. And then light, you know, it is part of my subject matter as well as my own physicality and the idea of space. Mm -hmm.